You're watching Indie Shooters back-to-back -back coverage of NAB 2019. Sponsored by 16x9, Band Pro Film and Digital, JBC, Manios Digital and Film, Panasonic, Sigma, and Carl Zeiss. Hi, Clement Indie Shooter, continuing our coverage of NAB 2019 again with Dan May and Black Magic Design. Pre-NAB, you guys dropped a bomb, brand new version of the Ursa Mini Pro. Talk a little bit about this camera, because uh, we haven't actually talked to one of you guys about the camera itself. Sure. So one of the things that we wanted to do is, you know, NAB becomes, you know, a, a lot. There's a lot of products that come out, and we felt that we had some uh, significant messaging around kind of the products that we were coming out with NAB, and, and we didn't feel that the version 2 of the Ursa Mini Pro quite fit in there. So it gave us an opportunity to talk about the camera a little bit earlier, although we know a lot of people are going to come for the first time and see the camera here. And it really is a generation two of the Ursa Mini Pro. So it's not like we've come out with a brand new camera that has all new features and is completely different, even though there's a lot of small differences that do create a basically improved version of the camera. So physically, when we look at the camera, it is really the same physical body of the camera. The only real physical difference here is we have added the USB-C on there for the ability to record off to external media. So we've seen this on the pocket camera. We've seen this on other products that we have. The ability to record to external drives, because sometimes I'm not just going to want to be changing out CFast cards. I'm going to want to be able to have that other drive, that other media that I want to record to in a, in a longer form. But that's really the only physical external difference that we see on these G2s of the Ursa Mini Pros. The sensor itself is the same size sensor, but it is a different sensor. And this allows us to do some new color optimization that we've been able to do. So when we look at the images side by side, obviously they're not going to be dramatically different because it's still the same color science, but we have been able to improve some of the color science that we're able to do because of the new sensor. And in addition, there's a faster readout from the sensor. And this is when we talk about things like, well, it's still a rolling shutter. Because that readout is so much faster, we don't get quite the same jello effect because the sensor is reading so quickly. And just lots of other little improvements we've done in here that aren't necessarily worthy of saying, well, it's a brand new camera, but being able to improve some of the audio capabilities, being able to do some of the pixel shading, the color calibration capabilities within the camera. These are all the things that make this a generation two without saying, yep, that old camera is just completely nothing compared to this camera. They're very similar. These are modest updates. This is why the price of the camera is the same, 5995, really is just kind of a successor to the really successful generation one Ursa Mini Pro. So one of the things I wanted to point out is that when you're going to SSD out of the USB-C, this is actually the same way of, it's like using CFast. It's not like taking it from a different part or like going out through the XLR or something like that. Correct. This is just taking it from a different drive selection, essentially. So it's not like we're going out and saying, hey, you're getting some extra thing that I can do multimedia different records in different formats. It's just recording to that drive instead of those other drives. And it's going to be the true sensor data. It's not going to be limited to ProRes or something like that. Correct. It's basically still going to be whatever you, I believe, set this up to be. So if I am going to do Blackmagic RAW, that is going to export that Blackmagic RAW out the uh, USB-C for you. One of your uh, evangelists, Vance Burberry, was talking, I guess he's been shooting with the camera. He talked about that color science, that it's the same, but it, that it's much more enhanced. Can you talk a little bit more about what people can expect to see? like? the differences? It's really about just having the data be not necessarily more accurate, but there's a bit there's a bit more that can be kind of given to that. And it's a really hard thing to explain because, again, I'm not sure that if you put a, uh, a bunch of amazingly shot footage shot on a G2 next to the footage of a G1, that you'd identify that those are, you know, entirely different, like putting, you know, two different, you know, one of our two and a half K cameras and you put a G2 next to it. That'd be more obvious. So the color science is all really the same in there, but because of the way that the sensor is, there's just basically more data Data, more information that we're able to work with. So that really comes into play when we start going into being able to edit that, being able to color grade that, what we can push, what we can pull. So it's, unfortunately, I've talked to some of the color science guys and it's just a really complex situation for this, but it does allow for a little bit more flexibility. Not, I don't even want to say necessarily more accuracy because the data is really kind of the same, but it's just the ability to do more things with the camera and being able to take advantage of that in Blackmagic RAW, being able to have all of that data and all that information to be able to use throughout the resolve and the whole process. Now, are are there other features uh, beyond the the color science and beyond the or beyond the sensor and beyond the USB C? There's not there's not a tremendous amount of change, and this is why we didn't want us to go out and say, oh, look, it's the Ursa Gener, you know, Ursa Extreme Pro version. It, it really is a while it's a successor, it's not a complete 
you know, turning the Apple card upside down and reinventing the wheel. It is really a generation two of the Ursa Mini Pro. So those that have the Ursa Mini, uh, the Ursa Mini Pro generation ones, it's not like their camera has become obsolete because of what we've done on the generation two. But it does definitely add new capabilities and a few new features and in general improvements to the camera as well. So we believe for us this is going to take this, you know, and give more life to this build and style of the camera that we're really excited about. Can you just uh, talk a little bit about the frame rate, though? There is increased frame rates, right? Yeah, one of, one of the things that we were able to do was to increase the frame rate. So if I'm not mistaken, on the Generation 1, it goes up to 120 frames per second. And I want to say that on this, it goes up to 240 frames per second in HD, 150 frames per second in Ultra HD. So we have definitely gotten more slow-mo capabilities and frame rate capabilities out of this camera as well. So these are some of the things that we're able to do because of some of the mechanical changes that have been made. But again, anyone that's gone out and shot with a Generation 1, it's not like you'll put them side by side and say, oh, that was clearly shot on. So it's a, it's a great successor to that, but it, it's not an entirely new camera either. One of the things we've used our Ursa Mini Pro for is uh, live streaming, utilizing uh, ATEM switcher and everything like that. Will we have the same control capabilities with this camera? Right. These are all still similar things where we're saying, look, we want to be able to make these cameras be usable for multiple different functions. So am I doing these for interviews? Am I going out and doing run and gun? Am I using it for live production? So all of that's still the same throughout the Ursa Mini Pro series. So these cameras can still function quite well with our, our new ATEMs uh, and, and with all, all of our live production capabilities. Now, there won't be two Ursa Mini Pro models, then this is this is it, right? This, this is now supersetting the Generation 1. There's no reason for the same price for someone to go out and now buy, really, a Ursa Mini 1, uh, Generation 1. The Generation 2 product is the successor for that product. So this is what someone who hasn't bought today should be looking out to purchase They're looking at our Ursa Mini Pro lineup. Now, last question, uh, availability. Do you guys speculate on a time? Yeah, we really hoped when we announced this three or four weeks ago that we'd have them shipping, but we did have a little bit of delays in getting these things out of the factory, but I now have them coming from the factory. We should be fulfilling to our channel partners this week. Hopefully we'll see end users getting their first cameras as early as the beginning of next week. Amazing, that's amazing. Damn, people want to find out more about the new Ursa Mini Pro, where should they go? They should go to our website, which they can find at www.blackmagicdesign.com. Thanks a lot, Dan. You're watching Indie Shooters back-to-back -back coverage of NAB 2019. Sponsored by 16x9, Band Pro Film and Digital, JBC, Manios Digital and Film, Panasonic, Sigma, and Carl Zeiss.